When you're filming the screen of an iPhone or a computer, the image isn't always going to come out crystal clear. Sometimes on a computer screen, there's going to be a bunch of lines moving up and down it, or if you're filming outside, a screen may look too faded. So what you would do to fix that is you would replace the screen in post to make it look just as crystal clear as you see it in person. In this tutorial today, I'm going to show you how to do just that. Okay, so here we are in Adobe After Effects and over here on the left I have my two files that I'm going to be working with. I have the video clip and the picture that I want to replace the screen with. So I'm going to click on this video clip, I'm going to bring it down to this little tab right here and it's going to create a new composition. And what we're going to do next is we're going to make sure that this clip is highlighted and we're going to go into animation and then go to track in Boris Effects Mocha. Make sure that the quality of the shot is set to full just to get the best result and then we're going to click on Mocha up here in the effects control tab and it's going to open it up right here and here we are and I promise that this is going to be a lot less scary than it looks so what we're going to do is go up to this X blind layer tool and what we're going to do with this is we're going to create a box around the phone next thing that we're going to do is we're going to click on the planner surface button and it's going to bring up this blue box and then what we're going to do is we're going to move these corners onto the corners of the phone and just so we can get a little bit more accurately uh push on z and then push forward on the mouse to to zoom in more and then you can push and hold x to move the screen around like this so now we're going to put the corners on the Corners. All right, and the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna go over into the left over here where it says track and you're gonna push on the forward button. And then now it's gonna go through the entire clip and track the movement of the phone. Perfect, and now when it's done, you're just gonna to wanna to click on this little cursor and move through it just to make sure that the track went as smoothly as we want it to. And it looks like it went good. So I'm gonna do Command S to save and then I'm gonna exit out of this. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna right click down here, we're gonna go to new and create a new solid. Uh, it doesn't matter what the color of the solid is. So I'm just gonna make it, push okay. Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna highlight this clip and then go up to the effects controls and go to tracking data. And you're gonna create track data. And you're gonna make sure that this box is checked right next to the layer that we actually worked on. Click OK. On the layer, export to, where it says none, you're gonna change this to the solid that we just made and apply the export. And now what this does is it tracks this little colored box onto the phone screen that we did all the tracking in, in Mocha. So next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna click on the solid that we just made and you're gonna pre-compose it. And we're just gonna call this screen. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that leave all attributes is selected, push OK. And then what that's gonna do is it's gonna create a new composition out of it. So now everything that we do in this composition is going to be in this one file right here. So we're gonna click on that and we're gonna go back to our project and we're gonna drag the image that we want to put onto the phone onto the timeline. And now with these little squares right here, we're just gonna stretch them out until you can't see any more red on both sides. There you go. And then when we go back to our main sequence, now the picture that we just put into the sequence is tracked onto the phone. Now the last problem that we have is the thumb is going completely underneath the picture and we want it to go above the picture. So what we're gonna do to fix that is we're gonna click on our phone clip and we're gonna Command D to duplicate it. And then we're gonna lift it over the screen clip. Now you're gonna double click on this so that it opens up in the layer tab and we're gonna go up to this tool right here called the Roto Brush. And it's gonna give us this green circle and to change the size of it, I'm gonna push and hold the command and I'm gonna drag down to make it go down and drag up to make it bigger. The only thing that's really above the screen is his thumb. So now what we're gonna do, since his thumb is moving over the screen, we are going to create a selection around his thumb. And since um, his fingers right here don't actually go above the screen, we don't have to worry about those so much. So we're gonna go to the very first frame of the comp and then we're going to make a selection around his hand. If you push and hold Alt, it'll turn the roto brush into a red one and you can use that to delete some of the selection just to make some more refinements onto it. And we're gonna make sure that his thumb is 
well selected. This little line right here, we're gonna drag this all the way out to the end. I don't remember exactly what it does, but what it should do from what I remember is it helps the program uh, predict where his thumb is going to move next. So I'm gonna push and hold command and push on the right key, and that's gonna just go to the next frame. And as we can see here, the program predicted pretty accurately like where the thumb is, oops, where the thumb is gonna actually go. But it's not always gonna be perfect, so you always wanna make sure that you're going through it and making sure that it looks good. Okay, so now that we're done, we're gonna go back to our composition layer and we're gonna look through this. And now the thumb is on top of the screen the way we need it to be. And I'm gonna X this out just so you guys can see what it, we actually did. And it's not always gonna look perfect, especially cause there's some motion blur on the shot that I recorded. So now just to do some touch-ups, we're gonna go up to the roto brush effect up here. And what I normally do is I increase the reduced chatter. And what that's gonna do is sometimes there's some warbly little movements around the mask and that's gonna fix it and make it a little bit less obvious. And then we're gonna increase the feather. And now when you play it, it should look very seamless. All right, so we got a bonus tip. Let's give it up for the bonus tip. All right, so I wanted to give you guys another tip since I was talking about um, screens coming out faded. So I have this uh, example from some old footage that I shot where I shot a little church service. And as you can see here, the sides of the screen don't actually have an image on it and it doesn't look that good. So. What I did is I went into Photoshop and I basically just stretched that picture out and made it look a little bit more full. So now I'm gonna just show you how to replace this screen with this picture. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight the clip right here and then we are going to go to one of the side tabs which is the tracker. And if you don't see it, just click on window uh, and make sure that this is highlighted. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna track the motion of the shot. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on rotation and scale. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Um, in the track type, you want this to be perspective corner pin. And now what it's gonna do is gonna it's gonna open up these four little squares right here. And what we're gonna do with these squares is we are gonna put it in the corners of this screen. And this works really good when you're working with things that have a lot of contrast. Like in our case, we have the white on the black, so it'll be pretty simple. And on most screens, it's probably gonna be a similar way. All right, so now that we have the pins in the corners, we're gonna push on play. And now that's going to track it. And since there's a lot of contrast between the white and the black, it does a pretty good job. All right, so now that we have our track data set, what we are going to do is we're gonna to go to this button right here, edit target, and then we are going to change it to the picture that we have, which is Shingo PSD. In my case, I'm gonna push okay. And then we're gonna click apply, and it's gonna take us back to this composition tab. And I have the picture off right here in this composition, so I'm gonna turn it back on, and here we have it stuck to the screen now. And now you can see that it tracks perfectly onto the screen. So that's the tutorial guys. I hope you found this useful. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. And in the meantime, follow me on my social media stuff. And thanks again for watching the video and I'll see you guys later. Peace.